Now this is the bit that everything starts to get really interesting and also really long if we're not careful. So it's important that we use the full potential of Pro Tools. In this step, we'll be talking through some tips on version control, on group editing, the benefits of shuffle mode, the awesome power of the selector tool, how we create clean cuts and then get our edits ready for the next stage of mixing. So first up, let's create a new session file and just call it V1. This way we can keep track of all of our edits moving forward in case we need to go back to anything. Next up, we're gonna take a look at grouping. It's really typical that we'll have a conversation between two people in a podcast. So we wanna make sure that when we move the audio for one track, it doesn't change any of the timings and the sync of the rest of the conversation. So as we've got two people in our conversation, let's select each one of these tracks and hold down shift. Then we'll open up our track list and we'll Apple G shortcut, which will get into creating a group. So let's name this group conversation. Click OK. And you can toggle on and off for these groups. So you'll see when we select either of the tracks, it selects both of them. So any changes that we do to them makes a change to both of them as a group. Let's just undo that a second. Okay, so you'll see here that on our conversation, we've already got quite a lot of edits made using some other software like Descript. But let's say that we know for a fact that we want to zoom in here and we want to remove this whole section, but we don't want to leave a huge gap where we've made the cut. So we want to start getting into the different modes here. At the moment, we're in slip mode, as you'll see in the top left-hand corner here. Shuffle mode is really helpful in Pro Tools. With shuffle mode engaged, any audio to the right of our deleted section will be moved to the fill the space and cleared by the deleted audio. For example, let's highlight here and we'll click backspace. You'll see all of this audio is moved immediately into that space. This is really helpful mode for when we're editing dialogue in podcasts. Let's just undo that edit here and talk a little bit more about these different modes and a couple of useful shortcuts here. So Alt 1 selects shuffle mode as we just showed. Alt 2 selects slip mode, which means we can go in and change as we wish. Alt 3 spot mode so for example if we have here and we know that we want that to go to 10 minutes we can select 10 minutes here and click ok and that moves that audio let's undo that and then alt 4 changes to grid mode here we can change our grid to different values but we're happy with the way things are at the moment let's go back to shuffle mode and now another really useful tool for making our edits up here you'll see the different tools that we can use individually so we have the trim tool we have the selector tool and we have the grabber tool. Trim tool, if we zoom into our clip using T and we go to the end of our clip and we select trim tool and the shortcut for that is Apple II. If you select through those different modes, you'll see here it changes the icon. We just want the standard trim tool. If we select it again, this then means that every time we make a change, it stretches the audio. If we select it again, this doubles the clip that we're dragging out. We just want normal one. So we're going to click one more time. As you can see, if we drag that back, that makes that change. And because we're in shuffle mode, it moved all the audio back. Let's undo that again. Same again. If we move it forward, that moves everything to the right. Then we have the selector tool. So let's zoom out a bit more. This tool allows us to select whichever part of the audio or our sequence that we want to edit specifically. Apple 4 takes us to the grabber tool, and that means that we can grab the audio and move things around as we wish. So for example, if we move that to the right, that's just going to switch the position of the audio to the audio next to it. We'll undo that. And now get into a really cool tool. We can then use the smart tool, which is Apple 7. The smart tool is really handy because it includes all of the different tools that we've just gone through. But depending on where your cursor is on the clip depends on which tool we use. So for example, let's look at some audio in isolation here. We'll just grab this piece, we'll copy it, we'll zoom out, we'll click in the channel and we'll paste. Apple V to paste. So here's our clip. We're gonna make a cut here, Apple E. We're gonna grab it, Apple 4, and then backspace to delete it. So let's take a look at our smart tool, Apple 7. So depending on where we put our cursor, that changes the tool that we're going to be using. So for example, as you can see, as I move around the different clips, it changes the icon. What's really useful about the smart tool is we don't have to keep switching between the tools. Depending on where we put our cursor, we have access to all those tools in one go. Now, for example, we'll look at the trim tool. To access the trim tool, we place our cursor on the outer edge of the clip and we can drag in and out as we were before. If we want to fade in our audio, we go to the top left of the top right hand corner and drag in. 
left click and left click. Let's undo those. If we want to grab our audio, we select the bottom half of each of the clips. And as you can see, that moves it around. If we want to use the selector tool, we place our cursor in the middle of the clip and drag where we want. As you can see where I place the cursor here, we've got our clip gain, and we'll get to that a little bit later, but that allows us to turn up and turn down the gain in that clip. And if we want to access a crossfade tool, we place our cursor to the bottom left-hand corner of the clip and drag that across. And if there was audio there, it would have crossfaded because there isn't anything, it just creates a normal fade. Speaking of crossfades, another tool we can use is to select the parts that we want to fade in, press F, and that applies an instant fade to the audio that we selected. Let's undo that. If we want a little bit more control to our fades and we want a different type of fade, we can select the audio we want to fade, press Apple F, and that opens the fade box. From here, we can be more specific in the shape and the curves and the power that we're going to use in our fades. This is particularly useful when we come to music editing, which we'll look at a little later. Let's go back to our full edit. So we have here over 20 minutes of audio. We want to start markering our different sections so we can visually see where we are. So we can click in to markers here, click the add sign, and set this to intro, for example. Click on enter. You'll see the marker appear here. And then we know that on the 40 second mark, this is where section one begins, and we'll label that. As we set in our preferences, we made sure that when we create a new marker, we have different color for each marker. So that's quite cool. I really like to have that preference set so we can visually see our different sections and jump in at the different parts that we know, for example. And you can see visually a lot better where we are. And then a final tip for if we know that we want to export some audio which hasn't been affected by our mix window yet. Say, for example, that we want to take this audio into Isotope RX as a standalone application outside of Pro Tools. We can use the Grabber tool, select that audio, and press Apple Shift K. This opens the export window where we can export the clip completely unmixed. And we can set our different settings and export that audio. And then, of course, import it back in as we did earlier in the session. Speaking of dialogue cleanup, we're going to get to that now in the next step. I'll see you there.